Um, so maybe um, somebody could could take this and start to contextualize what's happened over the last few years in the regulatory environment, and of course this this big SBF court case that hopefully is fully behind us now. Um, can you tell us where we're at with respect to the the current innings of of this um, of the of the sentiment of the sentiment here in uh, the, in the U.S. for crypto? I guess I'll, I'll start. Uh, I would call it like the perfect storm. And to really understand what's going on today, we have to go back, you know, in like 2016 or 17. Um, I think the sentiment in those years, there was a lot of speculation about the markets and tokens, and people were investing just based on the crazy returns that we were seeing in the market. But without understanding, like I think Jackie mentioned in the previous, mar previous panel, where this alpha was coming from, and the really underlying value of those investments and the tokens. Uh, now I think the space has evolved because of everything that has been happening, with a lot of like really centralized exchanges falling apart. Not really, they're not really based on blockchain at all, and the regulators paying more attention to it. Um, I think now, last year, this year actually, uh, 2023, we've seen a lot of news through every single month, you know, of like big institutions participating in the space and putting together partnerships and collaborations with more like crypto companies like Coinbase. And I think that's very important. So I think the sentiment right now is like we're waiting on the sidelines silence to participate in the space. Once there is a robust and clear legal framework in the US, but it's wanted. I think a clear indicator of that is BlackRock filing for the ETF. And I think it's just a matter of time for the ETF to be approved, and then the volume obviously will increase in the space. Thank you. Anyone else? Chris? I'll go next. I mean, you know, the one thing that we see in the market and why it doesn't feel like it's improved much is, is because volumes have been so anemic. Um, in fact, if you look at volumes uh, all year, Q1 was uh, somewhat supported by a bit of a surge in Bitcoin um, thanks to the banking crisis. But volumes, uh, particularly on and off exchange every quarter, have been lower each quarter. Now, clearly, uh, October has kind of changed fortunes a little bit. Um, we, we've started to see um, volumes pick up, and, and more recently, even in some of the non-Bitcoin, non-ETH coins and the altcoins. Um, but, you know, in, in general, there's still just a lot of skeptics. Um, there's a lot of people on the sideline who would prefer to wait until there is more certainty before dabbling their feet in. It's feedback we hear quite frequently. And you also have a lot of retail participants who, you know, they got faked out once, they got faked out twice, and they're like, you know, I'm, I'm not getting faked out again. I'm just going to wait until there's certainty. And that's why I think this ETF, uh, you know, uh, spot ETF approval would, would go a long way to kind of easing some of both the regulatory concerns and these fake out concerns that the retail public have. Yeah, I would agree with that. Just to, to build on, I, I certainly think the, you know, the regulatory headwinds I think that we've been facing here in the U.S. is feeling like it's starting to thaw. Um, and eventually I think we'll get past it. But just to put it into perspective, it's, um, it's not like that everywhere in the world. So like we're seeing quite a bit of it, um, demand, particularly in, in the LATAM space and, and out of APAC as well. 